Ah, home sweet home. Back to Toronto, guys. Raptors, Sixers. We got two games in the bank, and we are going to take a look at both of them. But first, guys, I have to ask you to set your notifications, governor. Yeah, like and sub, guys. This dude abides. This channel gets better with your help. Yeah, mm. not bad. Not bad. And I'm getting ready to go live stream, guys, and I don't want to go alone. We can have you and your favorite YouTubers join me here. Oh, wait. Join me there. Up here with Kawhi on the mantle. My goal is to have your favorite people talking to me in all of these picture frames, and sometimes they're the ones hosting in the middle. Please like and sub the video. Now let's get back to those games, and then I'll explain why Kate and Allah are down here. Two games in the bank, both Raptors losses, and in both games, I personally think Philly's been great. So like, kudos Philly, you're up to Oh, no matter what happens but in this video we're gonna explore the stats of both games and unfortunately it's totally unfortunate we're gonna be taking a look at the in-depth stats quarter by quarter because there's something rotten in fucking Denmark by using these in-depth stats from both game one and game two I'm gonna show you that in the first quarter of each game the refs don't have the same whistle at each end this is not something that NBA referees naturally do. It's something they're mandated to do. So either they're bought off. We were crooked. Or mandated by the NBA to favor Philly in the first quarter. We are gonna take a look at clips that involve Jack and Maddie D. And we're gonna employ our friends from Philly. Yes, we're gonna take a look at the same moments in the same games from the perspective of the play-by-play -play announcers, Kate Scott and Ala Abdelnet. We have to talk about the same thing you, Joel, were discussing with Nick Nurse last night, and that is going to the foul line. But I want this to be a conversation. So if you don't believe what I'm saying, if you don't see Floppy Joe flopping all over the court as cheating and the whistle only at one end of the court, and you think I'm crazy, tell me. Tell me down in the comments. But let's not get personal. Let's actually look at basketball here because I think there's something very important at stake, and that's the love of the game. If you agree with me that this type of basketball with Floppy Joe and Floppy Ja getting calls like this, and those same players require a lenient whistle at the other end of the floor to play their best basketball, they're both physical players. But in this series, we're not seeing the same whistle at both ends. If you, if you agree with this and you think the NBA's character is at stake, then write to this number. That's because this can't be the outcome of the multiverse where my kid is saying to me, they're cheating. It's embarrassing. The fact that this guy is willing to sit up, in fact, let's go to that now. It will only be fair if we hear from the big man himself. Why don't we open the mic up to three-time champion Danny Green, who's got the right kind of swagger and knows cheating from not cheating, in my opinion. He was good defense from bad defense. He's an excellent defender. And why don't we look at his interview and talk to him about the physicality right beside Floppy Joe, and we'll get Floppy Joe's opinion on this physicality as well. So here they are, Danny Green and no time champion, Floppy Joe, the clumsiest man from Cameroon. Let's hear what he has to say about the physicality in these games and the referee's whistle. Joe, so, uh, Nick isn't the first coach to say something about you getting fouled. Yeah. Well, this is the third time. I mean, he didn't say it exactly the same way he did, but this is the third I mean, time. I mean, I feel like, you know, all this, you know, like I said, I got a lot of respect for all these coaches. You know, they don't actually believe in it. That really, if you watch the clips, every single foul is a foul. Look at this right here. Now, to me, that is two points, and we play on. This is the playoffs. That is not an and one. The point range, but he got it to go in. Embiid head fake, contact. Bias Harris, clock down, Harden, and a reach in foul. There has not been fine to the Raptors as of first quarter. It looks like Ken Birch, the latest Raptor to foul Joel Embiid, who smartly heads to the line. As we mentioned, Raptors in the penalty. A whole lot of time to go in our first frame. Jack, lots of length, throw it up there to the big fella. Here's Maxi, and Embiid will go to the free throw line. Foul on Malachi Flynn. Throw it up there to the big fella. Maxi. 
Going to that point, Joel, it seemed like in the first quarter in particular, you were pretty emotional, pretty aggressive going to the ring, going through contact. Was that part of what you were talking about in terms of trying to set the tone and, and try to you know, make sure you were getting the calls and, and the game was going the way you thought it should? I yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't keep with, you know, like, like I said, you listen to everything that was said after the game. You know, referees in the league, they're the same way. They're going to come in and, you know, the best game, they're going to let, you know, stuff go. Uh, so, you know, they're not going to call, you know, some fives. Uh, I mean, that put me on the floor a few times. Embiid on the attack. In a foul, and B goes down hard as he lowered the shoulder into Siakam, and then goes down. They're seeing if it's a flagrant. Here's James Capers. The following review: We have a common foul on the play. There is no windup, no impact, no follow through. Beautifully done. I know Charles Barkley. I, I, and Shaq are sitting in the studio watching this, and they're like, "Yeah, that's how it yeah. used to be." <laughs> Unfortunate contact, but I don't see anything intentional. Yeah, I think that the fact that Van Vliet was right next to him and hit him and then yep. Yep. hit a Chua on the way down. Well, let's let's listen. Following review, we have a common foul on the play. There is no wind up, no impact, no follow through. All right, so as we expected, common foul. You can see there, it looks like that left foot kind of slipped a little bit. And there was some contact, no doubt about it. You know Toronto had a few words with the league office after the last game. I, I didn't think it would. Listen, it's it's a physical game. Uh, you know, that's not a situation where he, he hit him up above the shoulders. Uh, and to me, uh, this is why it gets interesting for me uh, because I'm like, well, cool. I'm going to come back with more power. So great if Joel actually came out and set the tone by using his power. He's an absolute specimen. And it, there was moments in the third quarter where he looked absolutely incredible. And I'm gonna put some clips over this just so you see that I really appreciate how great a player he is. But part of him getting MVP this year is that he's Floppy Joe and everyone knows it. And this is the point of this video is we need a hero because it doesn't matter if you're a TSN, TNT or NBC last night. All of them were getting the calls wrong because the calls were wrong. We realized with four minutes to go that Philly does not have a team foul. They don't have a yeah. team foul. It's a Ten point lead. Hard with the push off, and looks like that will go against Flynn. Hard exploder, no good. And James throws up both hands, looking for a whistle. Hard on Siakam. Siakam's getting handsy there. James Harden on the baseline, and then Harden turning around, talking to James Capers, asking for maybe a little more help on the other end. There's the action underneath. Looks like Perch trying to draw some contact. He does get some contact. Looks like James got a piece of him there. My point is all three play-by-play -play teams that I watched had trouble with these games because they all identified that the whistle was one-sided in the first quarter. Is that true? It's true for both games. Let me show you. Let's start with last night's game. When we bring up the box score, the advanced box score, what we see is the personal fouls for the total game are 24 against the Raptors to 18 against the Sixers. That's a big difference, but I mean, the Raptors play physical. It's like something that could happen. It's not beyond the realm of possibility. But what is staggering is when you know what you know about the first quarter from having watched the game. And that's that there were nine personal fouls against the Raptors, most of them against starters, and two against Ken Birch, who needs to come in and spell off Precious. The entire Sixers starting lineup, do you hear me? None of the Sixers starters have a personal foul in the first quarter. Two seconds after coming off the bench, Niang has three on. So the refs are looking to even out the whistle between the two teams, except the Raptors have all of theirs on starters and the Sixers have all of theirs on some bench guys that they don't really need. It's horseshit. Same thing happened the, fir the first game. So here's the first game here. And if we look at the box score, again, for the total night, 26 personal fouls against 18, which is totally 
lopsided, but okay. Look at the personal fouls in the first quarter. Two on Fred, both of them happened in the first bloody minute. Three on Boucher, one on Birch. Personal fouls, one on a starter, Danny Green. So you're telling me for two quarters of basketball, only one foul occurred with all of these minutes for starters? Are you kidding me? Again, two on Yang, one on Thibel in that game. Let me be clear, because my issue is not that the Raptors got more fouls than the Sixers. My issue is that I watched the game through three different freaking lenses because I was sitting there going like, am I just being a baby? But I watch a lot of hoops. I've never seen calls this bad. It's consistently in the first quarter. I think there's a mandate to call these fouls in Embiid's favor. And I'm not saying that just as a Raptors fan. They're getting calls just like they were in the regular season. The problem is this is the playoffs. This is when it is supposed to be physical. We need Joel to need to bring his power, but he hasn't. His version of power is him flopping around the freaking court and my kid is turning to me saying he's cheating. What does Danny Green think about this? Um, we don't know what the Justice is gonna make in game three, but like I said, we know they're complaining about the foul, so there's gonna be a wave of change in that probably. Um, but we know that you know the whistle may not be in our favor for a couple games over there. Either way, we gotta play basketball, fight through it, um, and oppose our will. We let it be known that we're not gonna take you know the bullying, we're not gonna take the BS. What's that code for to you guys? He knows full well this is horseshit. He's been on three championship teams. Two of them were underdogs, the Raptors and San Antonio when he won. He knows precisely what it is to fight through the whistle, and he knows precisely what it's like to have your franchise and coaching staff have to petition the league to get a fair whistle against the juggernauts. That's all that's happening here, and Joel is going up to Nick Nurse at the end of a game going, hey, these are all real fouls, because his ego is too freaking big to handle the idea that he's one of the players the league is trying to show off and is trying to favor. We all know it happens. It's happening, but it's destroying what should be a very competitive series. The Raptors should have been way up after that first quarter, which means momentum, which means the crowd is out of it, which means we could maybe carry that through. Instead, we're up by one point after one quarter, and he's got 11 free throw makes in one quarter? That's fucking batshit crazy. We need a hero. Yes, it's time to consider the multiverse. Do we want a shit freaking NBA in the future where my kid goes, hey, is flopping fine, dad? Can I flop and try and flop calls? There's a fine line between flop and selling a call. But the hero we need needs to save the NBA so that we don't have Floppy Joe and Floppy Ja getting calls that ruin an entire playoff series. Our Spider-Man that we need to step up to the plate is none other than freaking Adam Bloody Silver in this case. So where are you, Adam Silver? What's it gonna be? Which version of the NBA do we take into the future? The floppy one or the one that's based on pure skill? I have no problem selling a call, but I got major issues if we're trying to sell every play. Complete travesty if a talent like Joel Embiid leaves a legacy that is not based on his skill. If his legacy is that young kids look up to him and go, hey, were you, were you really Floppy Joe, the clumsiest man from Cameroon in the 2022 playoffs? Ugh. Say it ain't so, Joe. Go. Joe! Say it ain't so, Joe. Say it ain't so. I just wonder if the refs are in on it. This is Chef's Kiss Approved. Mwah! <laughs>